I heard about this gold mine by a friend of my parents. He is a geolo geologist in Africa, and he told me that there is an illegal gold mine somewhere here in the mountain, and he had to go there to work. Well, uh, he told me, you should make a movie about it. It's interesting. So I looked on the internet, and there was nothing, no picture, nothing, uh, no information about this gold mine. So, well, we went. I called my cameraman, sound operator, so we decided to go without knowing what we will find there. Actually, you're there, and the, how um, did you find your characters? Because probably there are plenty of people that yeah, you have to choose there are somehow. A few hundred people uh, who work there. Uh, well, first of all, we spent three days without camera, without any material, just to meet people, talk with them. And uh, during those three days, we found our characters, people who had typical story. But you also uh, get to know the management of the uh, this uh, uh, whole industry, who says that uh, every. Uh, work has a risk, so was it easy to talk with them? Well, um, the thing is that the mine is officially illegal, but the thing is the um, government is very corrupted in this country and the Ministry of Mine tolerates the mine because of money that came for it, so it can't be official because it's very dangerous and people die there every day, so they can't make it official, but they want also money. So we made this interview with the boss of mine, but we tell him we are tourists, we are interested, interested about gold mining, uh, simply tourists and he believed in it, so we made his, in his interview, but during the interview the guy from government came and said, and well, he was very polite with us for interview. Just look at us, okay? You're a tourist. <laughs> I believe you for sure. Well, but the day after we continue, we went back to the mine, and this guy sent us soldiers that came, arrested us, and we took our material and everything. So uh, we had to stop shooting after nine days because uh, well, he let us go away with our material and destroying what we shot but uh, and but he told us that if we go again to the mine well will be more troubles for us so we had to do with nine days when i wanted to shoot more than a month but uh, why didn't you uh, did you think about putting those story about you being uh, imprisoned uh, uh, there to the film well, or you wanted to exclude yourself totally? yeah i just wanted to well, it's not film about me, it's not, well, I had trouble with soldiers, but comparing to trouble people have in the mind every day, is nothing. Well, I, it's not interesting. I say it because it's my experience, so I say it now, but I will not believe it's interesting to put it in the movie, because uh, it's nothing compared to what they do every day, <laughs> finally. It's nothing. Benin was used to a French colony, so you being uh, uh, a French, uh, do you still uh, feel that uh, um, that people look at you as uh, someone um, who who used to uh, rule the country and maybe uh, have some think against it? Well, the thing is, in the gold mine, people believed that we were here because we wanted to buy the mine. They thought we were businessmen. And we took to take photo, we came with drones, so they thought we were like taking picture of everything, where we went down. So yeah, people, were, almost everybody believed we are businessmen. We came here for business, which was a problem because, well, we had few trouble with it because people thought that it was a bit dangerous because of it. <laughs> But we know that you're not a businessman, you're a, a filmmaker, a young filmmaker, but already uh, quite uh, experienced. Uh, so if you could say a few words, how uh, did you end up being a filmmaker? When did it all uh, start? 
to make films. Well, um, I passed just my Matura exam in France. And um, well, I thought about making maybe school, but I changed my mind. And I decided to start to make films, so at 18 years old. So I started to make fiction short films and then three documentaries in Africa. And uh, finally I continued. And I'm happy with it. The way I choose. <laughs> and now you live in Poland, as far yeah. as I know. Well, I live in Krakow since August. Try to learn Polish, but it's still not this. <laughs> so what, what you're doing in Krakow? Filming? Um, I live with my girlfriend and uh, I write and now I work on feature but fiction. You're not only the director but uh, you also shoot the movie and uh, edited it. So how important uh, is for you to be like an author? Is it because of the budget or you simply want to have control of every aspect of the movie? Well, um, Anyway, we had no choice, even if I would want, we did not budget, so well, we shot all film with uh, 1,600 euro, uh, and we count on it plane tickets, so it was like nothing. So I had yeah, to direct it, produce it, uh, shoot it, edit it, distribute it, but well, it's independent, but I love it. And I don't think I would like because I was completely free to do exactly the film I wanted, and I had no, nobody to tell me no, maybe you should do it like that. Like yeah, I'm more free than if it would be for TV, by example, because well, yeah, you don't know exactly what you want. Did you show the movie already in Benin, or are you willing to uh, do so? What do you mean? Uh, to the, peop uh, to the people you were filming? Uh, ah, to show them the movie? film, yeah. I still did not. No, no. I, I didn't came back. It's not uh, Travis, but I sent already the movie to our fixer that worked on the mine. And, uh, he told me that one day he will go to show them that uh, on computer or something. I don't know how he will do it. But I hope they will see the film. But the problem is that uh, some people can have trouble because it's illegal and uh, it must not be seen by people from government and things because they don't like what people say that people die here. They <laughs> well, they don't like what we talk about the mind at all, but especially not things like that, like people are hurted or die. So. People can be in trouble for it, so we have to be a bit careful to who we show the film. That kind of problem. Kustania, uh, when I was watching the uh, movie and had those images we know from Western movies about gold fever, uh, people in America uh, 200 uh, years ago, and then we see that those uh, this gold fever is still happening, just kind of outside our. Uh, point of view because somewhere in Africa where usually we don't uh, get uh, an access to 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 see it and you uh, give this access so uh, where the movie was uh, shown already and uh, maybe in TV or other festivals well for now uh, the film only run on festivals we made a world premiere uh, to the Rhode Island Film Festival in USA and after uh, well, many festivals since August, so for like one year we will travel in festivals, and after uh, I work with uh, two distribution companies that will try to sell the film. But now, well, it has to finish its triple festivals. So perhaps you would like to uh, get it. Uh, uh, shown in the uh, TV French or, or other one? Well, for now there is nothing planned on French TV or not TV because we can't show the film on TV for now. Because for big festivals they require that the film is not on the internet, not on TV, well it depends, it's only for a few festivals, but it, we could be like disqualified for 
have resurrections. So for now we keep it out of TV, out of the uh, uh, circuit, like VOD or something. Only festival for now. I wanted to ask about the music because I really like the music and I saw at the credits that there were like three people who uh, were writing this course. So what what was the process of our for the music, there is one music composer and there is two uh, artists, players. Uh, we worked a lot on music. We tried many, many things. Uh, his name is Philippe Fivet and he's actually now presenting the film in Istanbul, in Turkey, for uh, Bosphorus Film Festival. Um, so, yeah, we worked really a lot, I think, something like four months to try many, many things. Okay, and uh, how about the shooting? Because uh, uh, it seems like you had quite good uh, uh, equipment. Uh, the pictures are quite uh, stunning. So how did you uh, shoot? We had very, very cheap material. <laughs> we shot with camera, well, camera for 200 euro. Well, I shot with GH2. It's uh, just a little camera with uh, old Zeiss lenses. And we have... Uh, Black Magic Pocket Cinema camera. So we had yeah, two cameras, but really cheap one, very small and cheap. Me takie wrażenie, że de facto dla części z tych ludzi był to pewnego rodzaju nauk, jakby coś za wpadli szukają takiego złotego grala i nie potrafią z tego wyjść. Czy to było po nich widać w jakiś sposób i czy mieli tego świadomość? I had an impression that for at least some of those people, um, this gold uh, searching was like an addiction. Uh, so, uh, was it uh, um, clearly, um, was it easy to see uh, by them that they are addicted actually? It's completely an addiction and it's exactly the perfect word for it. It's exactly like, I, I always say it like it's like addiction to I don't know bet on sport or or lotto you know what I mean yeah. like it's addiction because well you bet on sport you win you lose you win you lose well and you want more and more and more imagine you earn more and more so you want even more but one day you will lose and you will realize how much you lose and you can't stop because when you start to lose you will lose more and more because you want to go back to win so it's the same people go on the mind because they here but there's money here people are here since 10 years they lost brothers friends uh, they worked so hard few like 23 and 24 every day they work so hard and after 10 years they didn't earn anything but they say I can't sleep maybe it's tomorrow maybe it's my day tomorrow maybe I'm just so close to the gold I have to continue maybe it's just here if I leave now I did it for nothing it's addiction it's completely addiction so they are gamblers but uh, most of them uh, are losing. You don't uh, actually show uh, the winners uh, of this game. So are there uh, any winners uh, uh, or these are just like urban legends? <laughs> well, the people who earned a lot, they doesn't exist because, well, there is boss. But, well, even, I don't know exactly how many people work there. We think around 400. Um, on those 400, the boss takes 50% of all earnings. So this guy earns a lot because he has 50% of everything. But 400 people share this 50%. So it's nothing because food is expensive on the mine. Water, there, there is no water. Uh, I don't know. Everything is more expensive. So what they earn, they spend it. They can't keep it in the pocket. People who earn is people who eat once a week who don't spend anything it's like the guy who bought his motor i know what he did he didn't eat and he worked so hard didn't spend anything and the thing is when people go to the mine they say to their family i will go to earn money i will go back with money in my pocket it's their honor to go back with money so 
they earn a bit, they save a bit, and they want to show to their family and their friend for their honor that they earn money. So they go to the city, go to bar, to clubs, and you know, want to show to everyone that they have money, but it's all they have, and they spend it just in one evening for a few months of work, just for honor. But you're showing there, there is a way out of this addiction. There is an example of the guy with a scooter, right, who is now a taxi driver, not, a, not addicted maybe anymore. He had head on his... <laughs> well, he kept his head, you know what I mean? He was not crazy. He knew that he would not earn more. So he saved and he was very rational. I want this amount of money to buy a moto. He wore six months and he didn't spend anything during six months, so he got enough. And when he got enough, he skipped because he knew he could die tomorrow. So but that was his plan, just get enough money to have it. So people who survive this mine are people who are able to say stop and to realize that there is nothing more to earn here. And who are able to survive here. Um, showing that probably around uh, 100 people died uh, in 2014, so maybe each year uh, the same uh, amount. So, are there any um, criminal accusation, or is it uh, okay just letting people uh, well, die there? The thing is, many people die. When it's people from other country, like there is many people from Burkina, people from Togo, and they are nowhere, they don't exist because they are like clandestines here, they are not. So they die and what they do, they just make a grave and put him in and there is nowhere but, you know, uh, there is no police, there is nothing. There is, you know what I mean? There is nothing. Because who is responsible? Finally? The boss, the ministry, is the state very responsible, in fact, to tolerate it because of corruption. State will not make uh, investigation against themselves. <laughs> so nobody talk about it, just people die and people cry and family cry and that's it. So the government uh, won't help and the international community, do you think there are any ways we, we could uh, help. The problem is to take the situation rationally. People go there because there is no work, there is no money. Uh, it's poor region. So you close the mine, what people do, they will come back as soon as they can. That's the problem. Close the mine, but you can't put soldiers at Vita Vietnam on the mine. Just when they will leave, people will come back. So, close the mind, but what for? So I, think, I think the solution is that they make it safe. They invest to make everything safe. Like, I don't know, galleries, more protection, because it's just, they put uh, trees that they cut, but there is humidity, so it's old, and sometimes it's just fall just without reason, so they could invest to make it more safe and, and like that less people will die, I think. But they don't want because they don't care. And for international, well, nobody cares about it. There is, uh, well, one of my friends work in one uh, ONG in Luxembourg who take care of kids, it's like UNICEF a bit. And um, she went to this gold mine because I told her about it. So they went, they made like mission to go there to try to take kids out of the mine. But it's impossible because they had uh, many trouble and uh, it was quite dangerous for them. They tried, but families don't want because kids bring back money. So that's a complicated situation. Okay, so um, just the last uh, question. What are your future plans? What are the films you're 
working uh, on now? Features or documentaries? For now, fiction? for now, I live a bit documentary. I have uh, one feature fiction this time uh, that we start to produce um, with a French producer. Is a producer of uh, Jean Jacques Cano. It's a French a director. It's Stalingrad or other films. So we start and we hope to shoot it in maybe August or September next year. That's very good preparation. <laughs>